Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My hair is wet, uh, and I'm sweaty. Um, I uh, took a shower, and I, I don't dry it uh, with a dryer of sorts because I'm lazy. So you can enjoy disgusting, sweaty, uh, post-soup sage here. Um, I had soup uh, for my brekkie because my dumb, dumb booty uh, last night decided, hey, uh, you know, I'm tired. It's like one in the morning. I get back from work and I make a bunch of food and then I fall asleep before I can even eat it. So, you know, now I'm just eating the leftovers of what I did not indulge myself in previously. Today we're going to be talking about something that has been kind of bothering me lately. You know, it's a bit weird, but it's the concept of like the romanticism of like death, destruction, damnation, suicide, murder, plight, war everything evil and terrible, but for some reason, we as humans have an odd generation that I think maybe not just this generation, just every generation has some weird obsession with romanticizing the unromantic. Now, it's a little bit weird, but to explain, let's say I adjust this first. Let's say, hypothetically, you as an individual are on YouTube making, uh, I don't know, like, war aesthetic videos. A good example of this online that you can use is the war, the World War II, the World War, the war aesthetic videos that I've been seeing. They'll, like, play music to them and then be like, oh man, this is quite a vibe. When in reality, it's men going to face their death and damnation. Uh, people, women, children, men, you know, people being horribly eviscerated, mutilated, damned, blown up treated like human garbage, abused in every capacity, and then, you know, torn politically amongst appealing to their superiors and or destroying the world around them. It's not romantic, but for some reason, people, like, have this idealized, this idealized version of such that doesn't make that much sense in the grand scheme of things when a logical mind applies itself to the realism of a certain event. And I think this has something to do with the internet. You know, on the internet, it's very common for us to kind of not realize, oh, this is a video of a man murdering another man. This is a video of uh, somebody trying to groom children. You know, this is a video of somebody trying to do something horrible. This is a video of somebody talking about how they stole money from somebody. Like, these are not normal things. And I feel like there's some level of disassociation that occurs when we are constantly surrounded by it with a screen that helps kind of hide the reality of it, you know? If you saw this in real life, if you saw somebody performing a murder or threatening somebody or facing an abuse of sorts, you would at the very least think it's not a good thing in most instances unless you had a literal vendetta against the individual being abused. And even so, a lot of individuals don't think badly even if they do not like the individual that is being abused. But for some reason, on the internet, this stuff slides all the time. And I'm not particularly certain as to why. I guess it has to just do with the general disassociation and constant exposure to things like the morbid online. Now, another important thing I need to point out, though, is we also have this really weird romanticism of horrible, horrible elements to reality. Like, things that are, you know, kind of contrasting, I have to say. Like, do pardon this, uh, as it's a little bit disjointed to explain. And I'm still hashing out the theory of it. But if you are depressed and or you wish to die, you have a romanticism of suicide, basically. You, you romanticize death. You have a desire, a love for it. If you're a user of narcotics, you oftentimes have a romanticism of the feeling that comes with something so brutal and that will destroy your life in the grand scheme of things. It's odd, but it seems to be the things we are drawn to, the more morbid they get, the more romantic they feel, the more desirable they are. And it's, I guess, the idea of, like, human sin or something like that. But another serious thing I must mention when it comes to this kind of thing is maybe this is where the idea of sadism and masochism comes from. Because you have this, in many instances, people have, like, a sexual derivative from this. But in general, you know, you're used to pain. You idealize pain. Maybe you're not used to pain and you desire pain. Or you desire to inflict pain on others. And it's born from this romanticism you have and the pleasure that can be drawn from such pain. I feel like this all spans across every concept that is negative to humans that we for some reason don't understand is negative to humans until it's too late, I guess. 
Uh, and this is more of a questioning video, a theoretical video, a composition that I can't quite comprehend yet. But in general, I would say we have some weird obsession with romanticizing, disassociating, and idealizing the unideal, the non-ideal, the damning, the rude, the evil. And when I say evil, I understand it's subjective. I understand that morality is subjective, and I think the more we learn about that, we are on the internet. You know, I've been on the internet since the age of five. I've been on it literally since I could understand what a computer screen looked like and how to read. Like, as soon as I had the ability to use my family computer, I remember it was like a Dell Tower computer, 2005, I was hooked. And before that, I would play video games and gallivants and do all kinds of other technological dealios. But ever since I've been on the internet, I've seen truly horrible things, probably such as yourself, you know? From the nitty-gritty one man, one ice pick, two girls, one cup, one man, one jar, Mr. Hands, things like that, to truly horrible revealings, like documenting reality, you know, where you see the ramifications of war, of trafficking, of all of the horrible things, all hidden behind a computer screen, yet somehow so exposed to you, the individual, you can see the world for what it is, and yet you become delusional as a result. You don't realize what everything actually is, that these things are real, because you're protected in the space of your own home, and none of these things truly affect you until you're in the instance of it. And even so, that's when you die. So it's this weird concept of not understanding ramifications. And now we have a new generation, or we have multiple generations of things like pranksters who think, hey, it's cool, you know, I'm, I'm going to go home, edit this video of me running around a Walmart and breaking things. You know, I'm young, I can get away with it. You know, there are people who online threaten each other all the time. They don't think about the ramifications. People talk about murdering each other online all the time. They don't understand the ramifications because they're hidden behind a computer screen and they have no recognition that there's consequence to action. And hey, in the real world there is, but for some reason on the internet there isn't. Even though it's kind of ironic because... In the real world, you have finite exposure. You're not recorded. You're not behind a camera. And you also are going to be in one instance, one interaction that is avoidable. But with the internet, you're constantly exposing and exposed to everything. And it's on the internet forever. These videos that you see will probably be somehow on the internet forever. Whether it's through my own hand, the Wayback Machine, if somebody decides to just put the videos through the Wayback Machine, basically an internet archive if you do not know about it. It is quite an interesting sort. I've actually utilized it multiple times, and that is for another story for a different day. But in general, I feel like people have a very delusional perspective when it comes to the internet, and when it comes to saying things on the internet, doing things, viewing things on the internet. For some weird reason, there's a level of desire and romanticism and ignorance that comes with the internet. And I don't think people recognize that. And in general, again, like we hear about war and we hear about decay and damnation and death and we laugh at it or we, you know, make aesthetic videos about World War II or like, like this is insane. Could you imagine like somebody going to war and being idealized for the vibe or the aesthetic while they play like great music to you or something? You know, it's not cool. It's not fun. It's damnation and it's most intolerable. And yet you have to do it because it's your duty to protect your country. Like, and yet people make an aesthetic out of it. So I feel like we just have become so delusional. Generation to generation. We have no recognition. We've never faced off with anything. And now we have no understanding of what reality is. And it's because reality and the internet are kind of ensuing between each other. And we're constantly dipping out of planes of existence. Because the internet, in my opinion, is a plane of existence in its own. You know? It's completely beyond the scope of anything that we comprehend as people. The coding, the algorithm, the SEOs, everything. Like the terms of service for every website, the cookies, how all your information is constantly tracked or untracked, or how you're constantly trying to hide your information through things like, you know, VPNs, which are a question in their own because of the owning of such data and what they actually can do for you and at best they can just disguise location but your information is still there it's accessible you know we have things like blockchains we have bitcoin we have digital currency now we have ai technology stuff that is spanning beyond any level of our comprehension as singular individuals with single minds and it's just incredibly fascinating but i really must ask you like do you have a romanticism or idealism or some sort of like idolization of that with which is actually truly evil and morbid and damning 
like war, murder, like true crime is a big one as well on the internet. We all think about it. And normal, logical people think this is bad. Other people think this is what I want, you know? Some people live vicariously through hearing and seeing and, you know, experiencing on the internet the morbidities of a human existence, the morbidities that come with being murdered. Some people get off on this kind of stuff, trying to endeavor to be good and righteous and gracious versus trying to perceive someone as such or be perceived as such when you truly have bad intentions. At the end of the day, I feel like, again, and I've said this before, but I feel like none of us know anything, especially when it comes to the internet. And we have a very bad recognition of what the internet really is. And it's a great tool to learn. You can literally learn anything through the internet. Pardon that. Um, you can literally learn anything through the internet. You can educate yourself in every capacity. But at the same time, you can also truly damn yourself. And truly become ignorant to what reality really is. You know? So, that's the video. It was just kind of me ranting and rambling. Kind of thinking about, like, it's more a theoretical video. It's definitely, like, not something that I have the best grasp of yet. I'm definitely in the early stages, the alpha stages, maybe the, the early beta stages of kind of thinking about this level, this perspective, but it's really fascinating. So tell me what you think. Tell me your theories in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching my people. It has been lovely. And uh, I'll see you next time. Slater.